you probably know that one is not a prime number. And if you saw my previous video on this, you'll also know that the real reason we say one isn't prime is because we want every positive integer, that means every positive whole number, to have a unique prime factorization. That makes prime factorizations a bit like DNA, but for numbers, because there's only one way to represent the integer as a prime factorization, and every prime factorization corresponds to just one integer. So for example, 350 is equal to 2 times 5 squared times 7, that's the only number that has this factorization, and 350 can't be factored into primes in any other way. But what about 1? If 1 isn't a prime number, but it also can't be broken down into smaller primes, then isn't 1 an exception to this rule? In fact, if we think about it in the right way, it's not, and as we'll see, one will turn out to be the product of no primes. That sounds like a strange thing to say, but give me a minute and I promise it will become crystal clear. Let's take 350 again. It's 2 times 5 squared times 7, so it has one factor of 2, two factors of 5, and one factor of 7. But we're going to also include all of the other prime numbers that are not factors of 350 in its factorization as well. So it has zero factors of 3, zero factors of 11, zero factors of 13, and so on for all of the other prime numbers. So each integer's prime factorization can be represented uniquely by this infinite list of the powers of each prime and what they're raised to. So 350 would be 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 0, and we could adopt a convention that says we'll just stop writing if there are only zeros to the right. So actually 350 can just be represented by 1, 0, 2, 1. If the zeros are confusing, remember that any prime raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So 2 to the 0 is 1, 3 to the 0 is 1, and so on. So we can use the zeros as powers in the prime factorization 2 and write 350 as 2 to the 1 times 3 to the 0 times 5 squared times 7 to the 1 times 11 to the 0 times 13 to the 0, and so on. But in practice, we wouldn't always write all the ones with the zero powers. And we can do this with any number we like. So 21 is 3 times 7, which is 2 to the 0 times 3 to the 1 times 5 to the 0 times 7 to the 1, and so on. So its representation would be 0, 1, 0, 1. 72,000 is 2 to the power of 6 times 3 squared times 5 cubed. So its representation would be 6, 2, 3. Numbers with fewer small prime factors will have lots of zeros at the start, like 323, which is 17 times 19, so that would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. And of course, prime numbers themselves are easily identifiable in this representation because their list will contain just a single one. So 13 would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, for example, and 2 would just be represented by the list containing a single one. So what about 1? Well now it should be getting clearer. We can express 1 with this representation with a list containing only zeros. Every prime in its prime factorization is raised to the power of 0. So it's 2 to the 0 times 3 to the 0 times 5 to the 0 and so on, all of which are equal to 1. And so we have a product of 1. So 1 does have a unique prime factorization and the set of primes in its factorization is the empty set. That's why for short we might just say that 1 is the product of no primes.